Hi YouTube, bidhead 85 here. There is a woman um, who wrote a movie, or a, um, E. Wu is a um, physician. This is the, um, the picture in, in her article about how stigma is actually killing some of her patients. And one physician rethinks the debate over marriage um, extending rights of marriage to gay and lesbian couples and she says when I first met Jose he was already intuba intubated or in the intensive care unit breathing only with the help of a ventilator suffering severe pneumonia he had found he had been found unconscious in his, in his apartment by the landlord Jose wore a crucifix on a chain around his neck and he had a business card for the local LGBT center and a bottle of HIV medication in his pocket there were no documents to confirm his identity. For weeks, my medical team and I meticulously watched over Jose's physical health. Twice, his lungs collapsed, and we put in several catheters to reinflate them. Five times, he went on to re into respiratory failure despite being on max maximal mechanical support. We spent hours manually pushing air through his breathing tube to keep him alive. A multitude of continuous IV meds and blood products maintain a semblance of vital organ or vital or semblance of vital signs. Drains in his bottom kept him clean and dry. We could not feed him because he had persistent bloodstream infections. Every week, the quality assurance team came by to ask, "What are your care goals?" This is usually a question my medical team and I would discuss with a patient or a patient's family, but Jose could not be awakened. And no one could ever, uh, no one ever came to see him. Fingerprinting turned up no leads. No missing persons report had been filed fitting his description. And we called the doctor who wrote Jose's prescriptions. He gave us the number for an emergency contact, but that man had not seen or heard from Jose for months and knew no personal information about him. Jose's profound disconnectedness troubled me. Every day, his nurse and I evaluated all his tubes, medications, and machine settings with extra care trying to compensate for his loneliness. I would squeeze his hand for a moment before I left, though I wondered if he was still with us in this world. The immensity of his solitude weighed on me. He could pass away and any, without anyone who would have mattered to him ever having a clue. How did Jose be, become so cut off? Was it because he was gay or HIV positive or something else altogether? Working in a safety net hospital, I have cared for many people like Jose who are hanging by mere threads in the margins of society. What kills them oftentimes in more heartbreaking ways is not their physical illness, it is their social isolation. Stigma is the cultural stress that ultimately extinguishes their lives. When academics talk about vulnerable populations, they're usually referring to people with no, who have no money or no power to people who, who need public assistance to thrive. Healthcare disparities are defined along demographic factors like ethnicity, employment, education, and marital status. Ultimately, though, what makes certain groups more vulnerable than others is not the category they identify or are identified. It's how they're connected. It's how connected they are to other human beings. Poor people can belong to strong communities that will take care of them in time of need and thus be resilient. The same goes for people who are unemployed, disabled, or uneducated. People end up on the street only when they don't have anyone at all. It's in this light that I have come to appreciate marriage equality as an important and relevant policy issue for our society. Beyond civil rights and basic human dignity, marriage creates a connectedness that is protective against life's unknowns. When crisis strikes, it is a buffer that prevents people from ending up like Jose, who essentially became a ward of the state. What cause do, does the public have to deny equal benefits to consenting adults who want to make that lifelong commitment to one another? Why do they quibble over gender when so much collective good is at stake? The same month I took care of Jose, I met Oscar and his cousin, Eddie. Like, Oscar, like Jose, Oscar came to the hospital with severe pneumonia, but Eddie was with him and brought, brought him in when his condition was less critical. I was able to counsel both of them about intubation when breathing became too difficult. Oscar designated Eddie as his health care proxy. And as long as Eddie was there, Oscar did not require much sedation or pain meds. We could see how quickly his heart rate and blood pressure improved with Eddie by his side. One quiet night, I finally asked Eddie why he introduced me, why he introduced himself as Oscar's cousin, when it was obvious that he was his partner. 
eyes to the ground, Eddie muttered that he was afraid we'd kick him out if, he, if we didn't think it was family. I started to apologize if we had made him feel uncomfortable in any way, but he interrupted and said, It's not you, it's Prop 8 that's been hard on us. As he laid his head on Oscar's chest, he said this, When will you be able to take this tube out, Doctor? On the whole, we felt an enough intractable conflicts to contend with without wasting valuable time and resources to set up more stumbling blocks for ourselves. The ultimate goal of government is to provide an infrastructure for diverse peoples to live peacefully, happily, and freely. Marriage equality on this level is, isn't about interpretation of religious texts, historical precedents, or legal technicalities. Moreover, it is about whether or not private sex lives of two or it is not about whether or not two private or the private sex lives of two people make us feel icky. As far as our elected officials are concerned, marriage is a si simple civil construct to bolter beneficial human connections that spill over into all aspects of our lives at work, in school, in hospitals, in neighborhoods, and beyond. Pride can overcome individual shame, but it takes all of us together to remove stigma. It is time to end the unnecessary suffering. E. Wu is a physician in the Los Angeles area. Why equality matters, anti-gay stigma, killing patients. Uh, thank you for your time, YouTube.